who has a new column out, and I recommend that you read it. It's called Ottawa Faction appears to be readying green jobs retraining rather than approved frontier mine. And Lauren Gunter joins us now. Lauren Trudeau's celebrating an extra $100,000 worth of trade here and there on a trip that costs more than that, while he looks ready to kill the tech frontier oil sands mine. Well, it, I, I'm not sure they're ready yet, but they would really like to if, if they think they could. There's a, there are, I'm told, two factions within the cabinet. Uh, about two thirds of the cabinet, most of them coming from Ontario and from some from Quebec, would like to kill tech. Others realize that a the federal government needs the money that's going to come out of the the taxes on tech, uh, but also if they reject tech, uh, there's no predicting what uh, what Albertans' reaction is going to be. I mean, my prediction is that separatist sentiment in the province will skyrocket. Uh, tech is tech's frontier mine is as you said twenty one billion dollars. It's seven thousand jobs. It's twelve billion dollars a year to the Alberta economy. It's eight billion eight billion with a B to uh, uh, private incomes in to you know to family incomes in Alberta. Uh, and and then there's this huge ripple effect about a about twenty percent of the amount that will be generated in jobs and income will be outside of Alberta. And it's long lasting. It's a 40 year project. And those jobs in Ontario making pipe and and in uh, BC supplying uh, uh, supplying electronics, uh, those will all last for the, the duration that the mine is open. So it's it's a it's a good deal for the entire country. Uh, not only that, I mean, the entire country should be worried if the liberals turn it down because People outside the energy sector, in international investors in other sectors are going to say, gee, I don't know if I really want to put my money into Quebec, into New Brunswick, into Nova Scotia. When, when the federal government in, in Canada is prepared to uh, ignore all of the expert advice, ignore all of its regulators' decisions on whether or not to license developments like this, and just go based solely on its own political uh, it, its own political benefits to whether or not they will license this. It's just so capricious. Yeah. It's it, you know it, it's so it's so transient that that a lot of uh, international investors outside the energy sector are simply going to say eh, it's not worth risking it in Canada. Yeah, I mean this is twenty one billion dollars of private sector money. It's not from the government, it, a lot of it will actually flow to the government. So it's not even Trudeau's money. And it, as I mentioned at the outset, it's already met every possible environmental safety Aboriginal approval to kill it out of pure political spite. I noticed that the new heritage minister, the guy who's talking about licensing and registering websites, he said to reporters today that he's so embarrassed that they're even considering tech frontier. He's not even going to talk about it in public. Obviously, he's one of the ones fomenting against it. It's just incredible the lengths that Justin Trudeau would go to break the law. Remember, he was convicted of breaking the law, uh, the Conflict of Interest Act, over SNC-Lavalin, which nominally was to save some engineering jobs in Quebec. Those jobs haven't gone away, by the way. The whole thing was a fib. But he would go to great lengths for 9,000 jobs in Quebec that were not in jeopardy, but he would whimsically and capriciously kill 7,000 direct jobs, countless indirect jobs, just to be cool with Gerald Butts and the rest of his environmental well, experience and, friends. And to get Greta to and get Greta to send him a nice card at Christmas time or something, you know. Yeah. He, this I've, I've come to call the liberal cabinet the Greta cult. Yeah, because uh, you know they they seem to pay far more attention to what a 16 year old. Uh, Swedish activist things than what Canadians think or what, you know, they, they're so caught up in what they call the settled science of of uh, climate change that they don't look at any other alternative. And we have become, I think, the only country in the world that is really trying hard to beggar its own economy, to to slow its own economy in the name of meeting our Paris Climate Accord uh, emissions targets. It, the Norwegians aren't doing that with their North Sea oil. The the Danes who have uh, wind turbines everywhere on their on their west coast, they're not doing that. Nobody's trying to shut down parts of their economy 
just to make Greta happy or yeah. or to make the activists happy. Uh, and and we are. You know, and this is the sort of thing that we did with Kyoto too. It, when when the Kyoto Accord was signed in 1997, the first really big international climate change accord. There were 38 countries that were signatories to the emissions controls. Most of the developing world was exempted. Of those 38 countries, it ended up we were the only country that was prepared to submit itself to legal challenges of its emissions laws uh, by its own citizens and by foreign citizens. Yeah. We have done this Boy Scout Act again and again and again, and it's beginning to really hurt economically in Canada. And I think the tech, the tech resources uh, rejection, if it comes, will, will be the will be a, probably the final straw. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.